Hello, welcome to today's episode of The Resigny Show, a show that I dedicate, dedicate mostly to talk about theatre matters and some other things. And today's episode is about some other things. Today, I'm going to be talking about my skincare regime. Now, but before I do that, I just also want to kind of put it out there, the kind of skin that I have and why I chose to do what I end up doing with my skincare. Alright, so first is I got to know about the type of skin that I have. Is it combination or oily? And there are many people out there, even if you go to beauticians or you can take tests online, they will tell you what kind of skin type uh, you have. But I think the best way is to literally look at yourself in a mirror <laughs> and then you can kind of tell for yourself the kind of skin that you have. Generally, you know, if it's an oily combination, it means that you have oily skin around the T-zone and the T-zone is the forehead up to the nose, the nose bridge and just kind of the fleshy part of the nose and your cheeks are normally the drier part and also around the lips. Uh, drier skin would be dry skin throughout the face. You can, you know, see that your skin is a little bit flaky at times. Um, or oily skin where it's not just the T-zone that is oily but also your cheek, your chin part is oily and of course there is a normal skin which I think is a little bit problematic because if your skin has been combination from the beginning then that's your normal, right? If your skin is oily from the beginning then that is normal. So Normal skin, in this case, I would just mean that uh, you it's not too oily and it's not too dry. So to keep it short, I guess I just put it as normal. All right, and I've also tried um, a lot of products and I've tried the off-the-shelf ones and also the really expensive ones. So I've tried Neutrogena, I've tried L'Oreal, I've tried uh, Clean and Clear, I've tried Origins, I've even tried SK2 and Dior and um, Clarins. I've tried it all over the years. Some work better than the rest, uh, but after a while, you know, it just the efficacy stops and I just get a little bit like mm, what's going on um, and I still have a doubt acne by the way so I first got my acne when I was nine years old can you imagine the hell that I had to go through throughout teenage years with this acne on my face um, and you know that part of time during that the early 2000s um, or late 1990s rather you know there's this that when you have pimply skin squeeze it that is so wrong when i learned about it later on because what it happened i think is that now it's this it's it's causing what i have or can't really see very well on screen is that i have eye picks so it's a little bit of dent on the skin uh and i no longer have my pre nine year old baby skin which i really want to <sighs> because this icy picks um almost impossible to get rid of you can go for laser surgery um, and it will make the dent less deep, but it will always be there. And that's what the dermatologist that I went to uh, told me about it. So I was like, okay, it will, it, will, it will improve, but it will probably cause like a 70 at best, 75% improvement. So it becomes less visible. Um, I've also tried makeup, not for everyday, like, you know, going out, because I don't like that, because my pores, are, I guess they're quite big and they get clogged quite often. Uh, so I use it for stage performances or for television performances, uh, stage having more. And always at the end of it, I would take wet wipes to wipe it off uh, until it's really clean. And then I would use a face wash to clean off the rest of the debris. And then I would use the toner to get excess of it. And I can still see that there's still um, more of the makeup that's still left inside my pores. Uh, and I do with the, the toner twice. And then I put on a moisturizer and I do it, you know, night after night if there's a show that runs for the month. Um, and I also realized is over time, my skin got a little bit like, you know, it's it's quite harsh, you know, to kind of keep excavating or excavating, rather excavating, excavating the pores. Um, and then after a while, I just don't do it. So I, I would try to, you know, get lighter makeup, like smaller coverage. Uh, lighter coverage, pardon, 
and then just to get on stage. And also I've been doing that for quite some time. So even until my 20s, I've got adult acne. And even in my early 30s, I still had adult acne. Now I'm in my mid-30s, they have subsided a little bit. Yes, hormones do play a part. Yes, diet plays a part. Yes, DNA, genes, everything plays a part. Too many things, too many variables. And then I also realized that where I used to live, which is in Singapore, uh, I actually didn't need that many products. It's just that I've been sold into to buying all these products for, for all these problems on my skin that actually I didn't need that much and all those products have actually kind of um, affected the, the, the dermis layer of my skin and to, I guess to some point the epidermis layer. Bref. Uh, so now uh, what has happened is I've kind of simplified my skincare regime to the bare minimum that I could do. So now what I do? Now I just wash my face with uh, non-soap products, so like Senex uh, or Cetaphil, just to kind of wash my face. And I do this when I was in Singapore. Now that I'm in France or in Morocco, I don't do that uh, that often because the humidity is not very high. So I do need to retain as much moisture just on my skin. So I haven't put anything else on my skin. I'm going to apply. I'm going to show you what it is and then I'm going to apply it. So the first uh, thing is I would wash my face if I need to. Otherwise, I actually stop washing my face with any kind of soap. Uh, when I shower, the water is what I use to wash my face. So I've... Ended up using just four lines to do. The first thing I do is I use this, the Body Shop... I'm trying to be an influencer here. <laughs> Never tried this before. Uh, the Body Shop Vitamin E Hydrating Toner. And normally, you know, I used to have a cotton and put it on my cotton. But after a while, I just like, I ran out of cotton and it was emergency. I didn't know what to do. So I just put it on my hand and I apply it on my face. Just apply it evenly across my face. So I put the toner first. Until it's pretty much absorbed into the skin. And then I use the Drops of Youth uh, Concentrate. And I just take maybe about um, one drop, two drops. That's it, just two drops on my face, rub it on my palm, again, put it onto my face. And feel this absorb. And then I use the Drops of Youth, Youth Essence Lotion. Again, same thing, I just put it on my face, just, it's not that big, it's just probably about that size. On my palm, put it on my face. Et voila, it's ready. Uh, if I need additional um, moisturizer, I found this very cool cream, Nivea Man Cream Concentrate. If I can focus this, can you focus? Um, I tried a small one first, a small tub first, instead of the big one. So it's a, it's it's just a small round tub um, that's quite flat for my listeners on podcast. Uh, and again, I just take a little bit, the top tip of my finger, rub it on my palm, put it all over my face. Yes, it does look as if I'm being quite rough with it, but that's just how it is. And then, that's it. That's all I do. That's all I do. And what I realized over time is uh, by not washing my face with any soap, or if I really need to, with the non comodo gen uh, soap to wash my face. If not, I just use water and I use these four products in the morning. That's it. And the evening, I just apply the Nivea face cream. So my face go to sleep and then that's it. And I repeat that every day. Uh, it has helped balance a little bit of the oil on my skin. It has also kind of created the my cheeks to be a bit more hydrated as opposed to being drier. But that's because I know I'm now in a place where I don't dehydrate as fast because humidity here is quite low. 
Um, so voila, that's all. That's that's what I want to do in today's episode. Uh, I have something quite exciting for the next episode, and I hope uh, you can tune in too. It is a talk with a director, uh, a designer, uh, an actor, and just a whole lot of everything. And he's going to share a little bit of his creation process. So tune in to the next episode of The Resigny Show. Until next time, ciao, ciao.